to another TechWinds video. Now in this video, we're going to take a look at an antenna that you wouldn't think is actually an antenna. The reason for that is because this antenna is basically just a printed circuit board with components on it. But it's more than just a PCB. This antenna is called a mini whip and it's based on the well-known active antenna designed by a Dutch ham radio operator, Papa Alpha Zero Radio Delta Tango, PA0RDT. Now the original design for this antenna was that it covered LF, MF and the HF bands, basically 10 kilohertz all the way up to 30 megahertz. As the mini whip is an active antenna, it requires power for it to work. So most mini whip kits will come with a small PSE board, essentially a bias T, which enables a DC current to be fed up to the mini whip through the coax and then only allow the wanted RF signals to be fed back into the receiver. Now if you search the interweb for the HF mini whip, You'll come across many variations of this design with some companies selling them as a ready-made kit or a components kit where you have to build it yourself you could also go ahead and download the circuit diagram for the mini whip and bias t board and build it from scratch just as many other ham radio operators have done in the past now this particular mini whip i'm showing you is a mini whip that came in kit form from a seller on ebay here in the uk each component on the antenna board and the bias t board had to be soldered now the strange thing is that this kit was actually more expensive than the pre-built versions. Figure that one out. Now as you can see here, I've connected a thin piece of antenna wire to the main antenna pad on the mini whip. Now this piece of wire is actually 10 meters long. Now I've done this because previous testing of this antenna, I wasn't really happy with the performance. So I wanted to try it with the wire attached as actually mentioned in the manual for this particular mini whip. Now all of the sample video clips in this video will be with the 10 meter wire attached. There was no real point to show you without it connected as it wasn't really picking anything up. Now I'll talk more about this at the end of the video. So here we can see I've also soldered on a short low loss piece of coax with an SMA connector. Now this will allow me to connect to a pre-made patch cable that I already have. Now the patch cable that I'm gonna use is made from RG8 Mini and it's around 20 meters long. Now here we can see I've mounted the mini whip at the end of this length of 40 millimeter plastic drain pipe and then the 10 meters of wire goes over to the end of the garden held up in a bush. Now at this point I will mention that according to the mini whip specifications the mini whip will work better when attached to a metal pole which should be grounded. And maybe this was the reason for me not receiving very well without the green wire. So back inside we can see the patch cable connected to the bias T board. The red and black cable is connected to a 12 volt power supply and the output side of the bias T board is then connected directly to my RSPDX SDR receiver. So let's go ahead and look around the bands and see how well this performs with how I have it installed currently. Of the case, um, she said the trial had to be fair, and they, the jury, were playing an essential part in the process. Mm. So did it, did it, it, it seemed to work all right, did it? Were there any issues with this? It did largely work, yes. Um, it, it was definitely a slower uh, process. Uh, for instance, uh, as is normal, there's a panel of jurors from which the 12 are chosen and they would normally all squeeze into the, uh, into the courtroom. The 12 would be chosen by ballot and the others would leave. So that was the medium wave band where you're going to find a lot of broadcast stations. Now you would have noticed at the start of that clip that there was actually no signal and then I applied the power and then you could see that it started to receive. Let's take a quick look at the 40 meter band. Well, to me, that's a very usable band. You can clearly see some Morse code on the left, some digital modes, and then some voice. And as we start to head up more towards 7.2 megahertz, you can also see some broadcast stations. Let's take a look at 17 meters. <laughs> Thank you. 
Well, it doesn't appear to be any voice transmissions going on when I recorded this, but you can clearly see some Morse code and hear the Morse code. And you can also see some of the digital modes. That's most likely FT8. Let's take a look at 20 meters now, which is 14 megahertz. On a nice report from Fukushima, uh, running here 400 watts, and uh, the antenna has spider beam uh, 20 meters high in your direction. And uh, I think you are running a... Uh, Tri-Bender for 20 meters, and uh, please tell me what power you are running there. Uh, by the way, uh, WX is excellent here. Uh, blue sky, sunshine, uh, 22, 23 degrees uh, today. 20 meters also seems like a really usable band. You can clearly see you've got the three different kind of categories. We've got Morse code, we've got some digital data, and then we've got some voice. Let's take a look at 10 meters. And luckily today we have some good conditions on 10 meters. Mike Fred, Delta, 59. Oh, thanks, Mike, Alpha 5, Mike X3. Hey, who's the Delta X-ray? Delta X-ray? PSL PD0 DX, you're 5 and 9. Yeah, thanks, 9, I'm at a car 5. Mike X-ray. Well, the conditions seem good on 10, but there just wasn't that many stations. So let's lastly look at some AM broadcast stations around 13.7 megahertz. Increasing divorce rate after an epidemic. Sociologists say it's due to people still have depression and anxiety from the pandemic. On top of that, many of them... Now, personally, I was expecting better performance from this antenna, considering it's quite popular. Now, there are a couple of possibilities as to why it's not working as I would expect. These could possibly be that this particular design of the Mini Whip is not very good. It could be that I made a mistake while soldering some of the components onto the board. But I suspect the real reason is that the antenna mast I used is plastic and the Mini Whip is not getting a good enough ground. Now, the theory behind how this antenna works can be quite complicated. And I will leave a link in the description of where you can read up on how it's designed to work. One website that I will highlight is that a university in the Netherlands where they have built their own mini whip and installed it on top of a building with a metal roof. And the metal roof acts as a really good ground and really brings out the performance of the mini whip. They've also installed a custom SDR receiver covering all of the handbands at the same time. I'll also leave a link to this in the description so you guys can go and check it out. If any of you own one of these mini whips or have used one of them in the past, I'd love to know how you got on with it and how you mounted it. I think it'd be really useful for others to learn about what kind of installs work and what type of installs do not work, like mine. Until the next video, guys, take care, stay safe, and I'll see you in the next one.